Have you ever heard someone say quantum physics proves time travel is real or claim ancient scriptures predicted our ability to warp through timelines? We've all come across these jaw-dropping headlines or YouTube videos, hinting that scientists are on the brink of building a real-life time machine and that ancient civilizations secretly knew how to bend time ages ago. But how much of this is fact? And how much of it is just really good storytelling? In this video, we're diving headfirst into the misunderstood world of quantum mechanics and the rich tapestry of ancient texts. We'll expose the most common myths, dig into what modern physics truly says about time travel, and discover what these old epics actually meant about bending the rules of time. So buckle up, because by the end, you'll not only see where the misconceptions about quantum time hopping come from, you'll also realize how ancient wisdom was often more metaphorical than magical. We Terracotta Creation welcome you to time travel in quantum and myth. If you love exploring the line between science, philosophy and fascinating legends, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives. Let's get started! Before we dive into the quantum side of things, let's define what we even mean by time travel. In popular culture, time travel often looks like hopping into a machine, spinning some dials, and poof, you're in ancient Egypt, or the year 3000. This is the science fiction version, traveling physically backwards or forwards along a timeline. But scientifically, there's another angle. When physicists talk about time travel, they're usually discussing time dilation. The way time passes more slowly for an object moving at speeds close to the speed of light, as per Einstein's theory of relativity. Or they're exploring peculiar solutions in general relativity that allow what we call closed time-like curves, which sound like loops in the fabric of space-time. Stephen Hawking, in his book A Brief History of Time, pointed out that these theoretical loops can lead to paradoxes, like the classic grandfather paradox where you travel back in time and accidentally prevent your own existence. While these ideas are mind-blowing, they're still deeply theoretical. There's no verified, practical way to pop into a new era or slip back to see the dinosaurs. The laws of physics generally lock us into moving in one direction, forward. So in this series, when we say time travel, we're comparing the science fiction dream of stepping across years or centuries with what scientists actually mean subtle, mathematically possible phenomena that might not be practically achievable. Now that we know what we're talking about, let's jump into the quantum world and see why people think it proves time travel and where those theories usually go astray. All right, so now we know what time travel generally means. Let's look at quantum mechanics, where a lot of the confusion begins. Quantum mechanics is the branch of physics that deals with the behavior of particles on a very small scale, like electrons, photons, and other subatomic particles. A few key ideas often fuel time travel rumors. Superposition is the idea that a quantum system can exist in multiple states at once, like an electron spinning up and down at the same time until someone measures it. Entanglement is when two particles are entangled, Knowing the state of one instantly reveals the state of the other, even if they're light years apart. People sometimes interpret this as if particles are literally hopping around in time or teleporting. But that's a stretch. In reality, superposition simply means we don't know a particle's exact state until we measure it. It doesn't imply the particle physically exists in two places or times at once. Rather that its state is described by a wave function encompassing all possibilities. Entanglement is also frequently misunderstood as faster-than-light communication or time-travel-like communication because the correlation appears instant. But entanglement can't send usable information backward or even forward in time, nor does it break the speed of light limit. David J. Griffiths, in his book Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, emphasizes that while quantum theory defies our everyday intuition, it doesn't violate causality or allow signals into the past. So why the hype? Because quantum phenomena are truly bizarre compared to our normal experiences, and it's easy to jump to sensational conclusions. Throw around words like superposition or non-locality, and it can sound like we're messing with time itself. However, as weird as it is, quantum mechanics firmly operates within the framework of cause and effect as we understand it. 
there's no mainstream theory suggesting we can pop into the past or send messages to our ancient ancestors. So we've seen how quantum mechanics, although counterintuitive, doesn't directly allow us to step into the past. But there is another concept that often shows up when people talk about time travel in modern physics, closed time-like curves. What are they? In general relativity, Einstein's theory describing how gravity warps spacetime, there are certain mathematical solutions where spacetime can fold back on itself, creating loops. These loops are called closed time-like curves. If you imagine traveling along one of these loops, you could, in principle, end up at the same point in space and time where you started, potentially visiting your own past. Sounds amazing, right? Well, the big catch is that these solutions are purely theoretical. We've never observed or created a real closed time-like curve. And even if such a loop existed, we'd run into massive paradoxes, like the famous grandfather paradox, where going back in time and preventing your own birth would make your journey impossible in the first place. Causality is the idea that cause precedes effect, is a cornerstone of physics. Most scientists believe that if such time loops are mathematically possible, nature would impose conditions preventing paradoxical scenarios in reality. Stephen Hawking called this principle chronology protection, suggesting the universe has built-in rules stopping macroscopic time travel from happening. Kip Thorne, in his book Black Holes and Time Warps, discussed scenarios involving wormholes that might theoretically behave like time machines. But these scenarios rely on exotic matter, negative energy densities, or conditions we've never observed in nature. In other words, while the equations allow for imaginative possibilities, our experimental evidence simply doesn't support a real usable loop through time. Bottom line, even at the fringes of theoretical physics, where quantum field theory meets general relativity, actual time travel looks more like an abstract puzzle than a roadmap to a time machine. Causality, it seems, is well protected. Now let's shift gears. A lot of people say, fine, maybe modern science doesn't confirm time travel, but ancient texts must have had the secret, right? Let's head there next. Modern physics may not offer us a working time machine, but what about ancient civilizations? Some people believe that our ancestors recorded real cases of time travel in their epic tales, spiritual texts, and mythologies. Here's the big question. Are these texts describing literal physical journeys across centuries, or are they using stories and symbols to explore deeper truths about reality and consciousness? Many ancient epics and scriptures employ metaphors to discuss concepts like divine time, cosmic cycles, or transcendence. These aren't necessarily technical blueprints for traveling through time. Rather, they often reflect spiritual insights or philosophical perspectives on existence. Allegorical narratives. Heroes venturing into other worlds or realms often represent moral or spiritual journeys, not literal escapades through time portals. Now let's check the mythic timelines. Ancient storytelling frequently compresses or expands time. Characters might spend what feels like a day in a divine realm, only to find that years have passed on Earth. But scholars often interpret this as illustrating the vastly different scales or perceptions of time, rather than describing a real time machine. When we read these ancient texts, we need to be mindful of cultural context and the poetic license they use. A story about a king who returns to find centuries have passed might be less about time travel and more about how spiritual dimensions transcend ordinary human perception. In other words, it's easy to read modern interpretations, like they had a secret technology, into passages that were likely symbolic. So before we dive into specific examples from cultures like ancient India, Egypt, or the Mayans, let's first understand these texts on their own terms. Let's explore the ancient Indian epics and Vedic ideas, often cited as proof that time travel existed in the distant past. The Vedas and related texts introduce the concept of Kala, which broadly refers to time, a cosmic force that governs creation and destruction. Time is seen as cyclical rather than strictly linear. You'll find references to vast cosmic cycles called yugas, each spanning millions of years. It's said that after one yuga ends, another begins in a continuous loop. 
Some modern interpretations jump to the conclusion that these grand timescales hint at advanced knowledge of time manipulation. But in traditional commentary, this cyclical view expresses the immense scope of creation and the cosmic rhythm rather than any form of literal time travel. Mahabharata is one of the world's longest epic poems filled with complex narratives and philosophical discourses. A famous anecdote often mentioned is the tale of Kakudmi or Raivata, a king who visits Brahma's abode for what seems like a short time. When he returns to earth, many ages have passed. Modern takes sometimes call this time travel, but traditionally, scholars see it as symbolic of the vast difference in timescales between human and divine planes, not a blueprint for hopping through time. Yoga Vashishta is another deeply philosophical text, a dialogue between Prince Rama and the sage Vashishta. Explores multiple universes, cosmic illusions, and how consciousness shapes reality. Some episodes describe characters experiencing entire lifetimes in what appears to be a moment of meditation. This has led to parallels with quantum or multiverse theories, but within its own tradition, it emphasizes the illusory nature of reality, Maya, and the profound power of the mind, rather than a literal defiance of the arrow of time. These stories highlight how time can seem different depending on divine or altered states of awareness, not that ancient sages had a secret time travel device. The Vedic notion of cyclical time, yugas and cosmic days, underscores the vast scale of existence, prompting philosophical reflection on our place in the universe. All of this captures the symbolic depth of these texts and their spiritual teaching about transcending ordinary perception rather than actual physical journeys to the past or future. Ancient India wasn't alone in contemplating the mysteries of time. Almost every culture developed its own framework, some cyclical, some linear, some deeply tied to spirituality and mythology. Let's explore a few highlights. Mayan cosmology. The Mayans are famous for their elaborate calendar systems, including the long count calendar that sparked doomsday rumors for 2012. They viewed time as cyclical, with recurring world ages, somewhat like the yuga cycles in Vedic thought. Modern interpretations sometimes claim the Mayans predicted future events through time travel. In reality, their calendars tracked astronomical cycles and ritual schedules, not literal leaps through time. Ancient Egypt Egyptian mythology featured the daily journey of the sun god Ra through the underworld, symbolizing death, rebirth, and renewal. The cyclical concept of day-night, life-death, and the eternal nature of the afterlife gave rise to a perception of time repeating or regenerating rather than time travel. Hieroglyphic texts often refer to cosmic order, Maat, rather than advanced physics. They are mythic-laden, spiritual accounts not instructions for building a time machine. Aboriginal Australian Dream Time In many Aboriginal traditions, Dream Time represents a timeless realm of creation and ancestral presence, where past, present and future coexist. It's a spiritual and cosmological framework that emphasizes unity with the land and ancestry, not a method of physically revisiting historical events. Other philosophical references Ancient Greek writings like Plato's Allegory of the Cave discuss multiple levels of reality and perception, though not in the sense of traveling to different eras. Taoist philosophy in China speaks of harmonizing with the flow of the Tao, where linear time can seem irrelevant to deeper spiritual truths. In each of these cases, we find themes of cyclical renewal, cosmic symbolism, and sometimes mind-bending timelines. But these motifs serve as cultural or spiritual metaphors, not literal engineering or scientific proposals. When we divorce these beliefs from their original context, it's easy to think they point to time travel secrets. But they're far richer and more nuanced than that, showing us how humans throughout history have grappled with existence, eternity, and our place in the cosmos. After exploring ancient India, Egypt, the Mayans, and more, it's clear that time in many cultures is viewed as far more than just a clock's ticking or a calendar's date. These traditions often present philosophical and spiritual perspectives on time, rather than literal handbooks for time travel. From the Vedic concept of Kala to the Mayan long count calendar, there's a recurring message. Human perception of time is limited, and there's a broader cosmic rhythm beyond our everyday experience. 
Instead of describing physical journeys to the past or future, these teachings often encourage us to transcend ordinary awareness, embracing the idea that reality is greater or even more illusory than we imagine. Many so-called time travel episodes in ancient texts turn out to be allegorical journeys emphasizing moral, ethical, or spiritual lessons. The figure who returns to find centuries have passed might embody how radically different divine or altered states of consciousness can feel, not a literal demonstration of quantum leaps. Whether it's the cyclical birth and death of universes in Hindu cosmology or the perpetual renewals in Egyptian mythology, these ancient frameworks remind us that everything is in flux. By reflecting on these cycles, we learn about impermanence, humility before vast cosmic timelines, and sometimes deeper truths about life and existence. Today, we're quick to see advanced technology or hidden science in ancient stories. While it's a testament to our fascination with time travel, it can also overshadow the true depth of these narratives. Scholars generally agree that ancient authors used symbolic language to convey profound insights, not to document physical escapades across eras. In short, these cultural and spiritual perspectives on time often point inward, to our consciousness, our worldview, and our place in the cosmos. They invite us to broaden our minds, but they're not literal roadmaps for time machines. Next, we'll bring it all together how quantum mechanics and ancient wisdom both challenge our assumptions about time, yet in very different ways. So, here's where we land after our journey through quantum mysteries and ancient myths. Quantum mechanics can seem to defy common sense with superposition and entanglement, but it doesn't provide a functional path for literal time travel. It operates within a framework that still respects causality. Ancient texts and myths from the Vedic concept of cyclical time to Mayan calendars to Egyptian renewal myths, often use symbolic or spiritual language to explore deeper truths about the universe and our place in it. While they can sound like they're describing time travel, most scholars interpret these stories as allegories rather than proof of advanced temporal technology. Ultimately, both modern quantum theory and ancient wisdom challenge our assumptions about how time really works but they do so in very different ways. On one side, you have rigorous science pushing the boundaries of what's physically possible, and on the other, centuries-old spiritual teachings that examine the nature of perception, reality, and cosmic order. Thank you for joining us on this exploration. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you haven't already, Subscribe and tap the bell icon to stay entangled with us for more deep dives into the intersections of science, philosophy, and myth. In our next episode, we'll go deeper into the philosophical underpinnings of quantum mechanics and compare them with ancient philosophical insights, exploring how both scientific and spiritual worldviews grapple with the biggest questions. What is reality? How do we perceive time? And what does it all mean for us today? Until then, stay curious, question the world around you, and keep exploring those cosmic possibilities. Thanks for watching.